Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17. But upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Let's read it together. But upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness. The house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Psalm 34 verse 17. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their trouble. In verse 19, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. I want to share with us on what I titled Activating Deliverance Provision. Activating Deliverance Provision. Some of you will say, I don't think this message have anything to do with me. I have traveled to Europe, I've traveled to so many places and I've moved around so many countries in Africa. And I have discovered that 95% of families and homes in Africa are directly or indirectly tied to ancestral worship. And sometimes, some school of thought by level of teachings have tried to de-emphasize the need for deliverance. Not understanding that deliverance is one of the purpose why Jesus came. Now hear what the scriptures say. For this same purpose, he was made manifest that he may destroy the works of darkness. Now hear this. If you don't know the purpose of a thing, abuse is inevitable. You must understand purpose is the original intention why a thing is created. Now the purpose why he came was to destroy the works of darkness. Now it is not just to save souls but to make an open spectacle, a caricature of the works of darkness. Bringing them down, lampooning them, disgracing them, and enthroning the sovereignty of Christ above principalities and power. Colossians 2.10 says, Jesus is the head of all principalities and power. Let me put the proper quotation. For ye are complete in Christ Jesus, for he is the head of all principalities and powers. Now, in Psalm 34, verse 17, he said, the righteous cried out. Who is crying out? Who is crying out? I didn't hear you well. Is it an unbeliever? Is it an unbeliever? A pagan? A soothsayer? Who is crying here? What is he crying out for? The righteous cried, and the Lord hears him and delivers them all from their what troubles. Why is he crying? He's crying for deliverance. The righteous is crying for deliverance. The righteous is not crying for breakthrough, but crying for deliverance. And the Lord hear it. The Lord hear it. I've heard people said, when you are righteous, you don't need deliverance. But David here said, the righteous cry, and God hears and delivers him from troubles. Now in verse 19, you see what the Bible says. Am I communicating? 
He said, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. So it is possible for a man to be righteous and be afflicted. And the Bible said, the afflictions are many. They are many, not just one. But the Lord will deliver. I'm talking to saints here. Those who are righteous, you have prayed, you have fasted, you have lived an holy life, but yet there is a thorn in your flesh, but yet there is a problem in your spirit. You don't understand why you are going through this. I bring a therapy, I bring a prescription of a drug through Bible McQueen and prayer McQueen to give you your miracle machine. Am I talking to somebody here? Somebody shot fire. Shout fire. Shout fire. Now hear this. Deliverance is part of your part of your covenant right. And it is a package in the word of God for your life. God has prepared you to have access, to gain access. To gain breakthrough into the indiluted word of God. So that you might be able to be delivered. But there are forces that don't want you to be delivered. After the end of this service. I am terminating powers of struggle. <laughs> Deliverance is a spiritual convenient right. The death of Jesus on the cross of Calvary guarantees us the right and the access to proper and absolute deliverance deliverance is the promise of god for his children the children of israelites were supposed to be in slavery for 400 years but they spent 430 years because there was no prophet of deliverance until god raised up moses he became a voice of deliverance here it is even when god is able to deliver you he needs a physical agent through which he can channel his power i came here by the voice of jehovah and i'm prophesying to your life Whatever has held you bind is about to let you go. God makes deliverance provision so that we might be able to enjoy the package of his death on the cross. Deliverance means to be rescued from bondage, total freedom from affliction, oppression, and demonic activities and manipulation. Deliverance means to be rescued from bondage. It means absolute liberty, total freedom from affliction, oppression, and demonic manipulations and tendencies. I am here to prophesy and to bring the mandate of God's deliverance word. You will not remain the way you are. God is about to set you free. Now hear this. You need deliverance. M-A-N stands for man. M morning. A afternoon. N night. And these are the three stages of a man's life in destiny. Your first 30 years in life is your morning stage. Your second stage is from your 30th year to your 60th age. From your 60th to your 90th is your night time. Your first 30th year in your lifetime, you are expected to have sown seed that would have raised up to your afternoon. Your first 30th year of life, you should have gone through your nursery, primary, secondary, university. Your first 30th year of your life, you should have met with your life partner. Discover yourself maritally. Know your focus in destiny. Know if you are to be a doctor. Know if you are to be a lawyer. Discover yourself. Arrive at the junction at your first 30th year. At your 30th year to your 60th year, at that time, you begin to shine for the world to see the capacity of your potentials. Now, there is a carryover 
Some of you are 35, 40. You are not married. There's something wrong. You are having a carryover of a curse. Now, at your afternoon stage, from your 30th to your 60th, you should have a house of your own. You should have all the basic necessity. To drive a car, have a house, is not a luxury. It's a necessity of life. So it doesn't make you a big man. It is necessary that you should have it. So if you don't have it, you are a failure. So there is a carrying over. Now, at this stage, you should see your children. At this stage, your children should be coming forth. At this stage, you should be able to groom them. So that when you get to your 60th, they are already servicing your life. Now, from your 60th to your 90th year, it is supposed to be rest from your afternoon stage. What does that mean? Whatever you have invested on from your 30th to your 60th should begin to water you so that you can live a long life. Am I teaching you now? Now, something is wrong. If at the age of 35, you are not married, there is something wrong. It is not God's plan for your life. If at the age of 35, 40, 50, you don't have a house of your own, there is a demon manipulating you. If at the age of 40, 45, you are not with your wife, you are not with somebody that you should call your own, there is something wrong. There is a demonic manipulation happening to you. Am I talking? to somebody here how do i know that i need a deliverance when i am going number one through some un uncontrolled level level of obsession you are addicted to alcohol addicted to cigarette you are addicted to certain things you can't explain you have tried to come out of it but you can't come out you are born again but you are still watching pornography there's something wrong you need deliverance you are 30 40 45 you are still bedwetting i'm telling you that's not ordinary you speak in tongues you read the bible but something is wrong the bible said if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do but i can say to you the righteous can begin to do something by activating deliverance provision am i talking to somebody here am i talking to somebody here something is wrong you are beautiful you are educated you are well behaved well brought up from a good family but you cannot just keep a man men keep changing you like clothes something is wrong you need deliverance you need deliverance from that power you are a pastor you started a church the church is 15 years the church is not growing something is wrong you cannot carry the Holy Ghost and not grow you cannot carry the Holy Ghost and not advance you cannot carry the Holy Ghost and not prosper at this age of your life you are still fighting to pay rent something is wrong you should be a landlord at this time you should be a landlady at this time something is fighting you I can tell you something from your foundation something from your father house is fighting you in Luke chapter 19 Jesus said to them before the triumphant entry he said you will go to the village you will find a cult a donkey that no man has ever sat on say so you will lose him and bring him for me when you check the scripture very well you don't use him for an animal you use it for an animal so Jesus was talking about a man that was tied down in the village not to prosper he was supposed supposed to be a presidential ride by Jehovah but somebody tied that donkey down he said when they ask you why are you losing him say the master is in need of him can I say something here whatever has tied you down in your village whatever has tied you down from your father's house my father is about to lose you hey! You don't serve a dead God. You serve a living God. It's the same today and forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. Sit down. Mashadaba. Mashabalada. How do I know I need deliverance? 
I was dealing with a case of somebody who began to, he began to have affection for animals. Sleeping with goats. That's, that is a demon. Born again, speaking tongues. But how? What happened? What happened? Now let's be realistic. Somebody said once you are free and you are born again, all things are passed away. That's true. Right. But do you know the problem with us? We cannot maintain righteousness. We cannot maintain purity. How many of you are born again here? Wave your hands. Now I want to ask you a question. I want you to be sincere with me. Since you gave your life to Christ five years, six years, seven years, if you know you have never committed any sin, lift up your hands. Oh, you've committed. You've committed. No, you did not lie. No, you did not get angry. No, you did not do something. If you know you've never. So you've, you know you, you've committed sin. Now, this is why sometimes it is difficult. When people say once saved, forever saved. No. Once saved, true. As long as you maintain your righteousness, forever saved. But when you go into sin, there is a loophole. And when there is a loophole, demonic activity will take charge. This is the problem. That's why the devil has access. When he has access, some of us sometimes don't even confess our sins. Because we believe we are born again. Now, can I ask you something? How many of you since you got born again, before you got born again, you had somebody 200,000 rounds? Now you not got born again, you say, all things are passed away, then you not tell the man, all things are passed away, including the money I owe you. <laughs> you know I'm a new creature now. All things are passed away, including the money I owe you. Is it possible that way? Am I helping you now? Deal with what you need to deal with. I am from an Islamic background. My great-grandfather, Iginla, was an imam. My father, a chronic Muslim. I'm from a family of eight. Every one of us. My real name is Abdul Karim Lassisi. I had a brother, Abdul Hamid. I had the other one, Abdul, Abdul, Abdul Fathai. Mili Katu. Risi Katu. Rali Atu. That was our name. Until Jesus changed it. Now hear this. When I got born again, highly anointed as God was using me, there was one thing that I could not deal with was poverty. I prayed, I fasted, but I never knew the covenant provision. I will come down from mountain. My poverty was raised to power too. I lived in a one room apartment. I said this. That look amoebic. I don't know what my landlord had in mind. Whether I want to build a goat house and convert it to a woman being house. So shapeless. I could barely feed. But yet, I will lay hands on the blind, they see cripples walk. But yet, there was something wrong with me. I pastored my church in Nigeria. Ministry three years, seven years of church, ten years, 140 members had dropped, 120 members had dropped to 40 members. And I was highly anointed. But what I was doing was not growing. Until God began to speak to me. Something is wrong with your foundation. Are you dangerously anointed and yet things are not working? Forget about this public success. And you have a private failure. You know you make people feel you are successful. But you know within you, you are failing. Deliverance is facing the nitty pretty. The basic things. Knowing the truth. John 8 32 then you shall know the truth and the truth that you know shall set you free so you must understand that until you come to the knowledge of reality that something is wrong you cannot be delivered you can't deliver a man that does not believe that he needs deliverance the church have been so relaxed 
Members are going to meet Songo men and going for Muti. They come to church, clamp their hands because they no longer believe in the power of Christ because no power is touching them. It has become an entertainment center and no longer a deliverance center and no longer a healing center and no longer a freedom center and no longer a salvation center. The church is supposed to be like a spiritual clinic where people come and they are attended to and they are giving spiritual force aid. It is not supposed to be a gathering of casualty. There is something that is wrong when the crowd gather and the power of God cannot change them. Then it becomes a social gathering, a club gathering. It becomes a political gathering because the power of God is not present for the kingdom of God. It's not in words, but it's in the demonstration of the power of God. The Bible said they have the form of God but they are denying the power thereof you must understand that once have I spoken twice have they heard that all power that all power that all dunamis belong to God am I helping you is somebody hearing what God is saying I see you change here I see somebody coming out I see somebody coming out you are coming out you are coming out if you are shouting the amen you get it do i need deliverance yes sir yes ma when do i know i need deliverance you sleep you make sex while intercourse in the dream you think it's normal no it's not normal sir ma it's not normal you call it a dream and yet your bed is wet. There's something real about it. When you have sexual intercourse in a dream, you are single. I can assure you, the devil is deterring you from marrying. If you are married, he will block up your womb because that's a spiritual husband. Now here this dream at the gateway of our experience to make us know what happens in the realm of the spirit. You see yourself around a trash bin that's the spirit of shame you see yourself carrying load in your dream and you you are going on a journey never never getting to the end that's the spirit of frustration and poverty you see yourself mad that's an arrow of madness being projected you always see yourself at back at home in the village you see yourself in your primary school there's a spirit of stagnation and backwardness you must understand something is wrong you see yourself that you be in the dream and physically you bedwet yourself that's a power to frustrate and bring insult to your integrity and destiny something is wrong something is wrong you see yourself swim in the river something is wrong that's a marine connection you see yourself you are making love constantly whether a male or a female a male a spiritual wife a female a spiritual husband something is wrong now hear this am i teaching now yes, am i teaching now yes, are you getting what i'm saying yes, am i communicating yes, you walk like elephant you are intelligent you get good salary but at the end of the month you don't know what you use your money to do you have worked for three years in that same company but you cannot tell what you have used your money to do something is fighting you hear this how do i know i need deliverance nobody past the age of 45 when they get to 45 somebody dies when they get to 45 somebody dies. that's a generational cause of premature dead you need to break it how do i know you need deliverance you buried your first child another one is sick you buried and you are burying your children no your children are supposed to pour sand on your head at old age you are not supposed to know their graveyard in your lifetime something is wrong you married the first man the man died you married another one the man that are you are in the third one he's already sick something is wrong Am I helping you? Are you getting it? Something is wrong. Now, let me tell you this. What deliverance is not? Because people have abused deliverance ministry. Now, these methods are not deliverance method. Using broom for deliverance. 
It's not deliverance. Somebody does feel like beating you, so you use broom to flog you. That's not deliverance. Batting with soap from any man of God is satanic and demonic. When people begin to produce objects to you, give you in the name of deliverance, no, that's not deliverance. Number three, killing animals for sacrifice in the name of deliverance, that's not deliverance. Jesus is the universal sacrifice. That's not deliverance. <laughs> Eating clothes. Eating air. Eating grass. That's not deliverance. No matter what you call it, that's satanic. That's never deliverance and can never be deliverance. And here it is. Every deliverance minister that cannot teach the word of God cannot run deliverance. You must be able to defend, teach, open, educate, inform, transform through the word. If you cannot do that, you have no business in that office. Because the entrance of his word gives it life. It is the deliverance through the light of God's word that is a complete one. You must be informed. You must be empowered by scriptural knowledge. Scriptural knowledge. When scriptural knowledge invades your life, you begin to know who you are in Christ Jesus. When powers of darkness invade you, you know the scripture and the bullets to use. You crack your spiritual God and release some doors of scriptures and you'll be able to contain, destroy, dismantle demonic activity. You don't cast out demons just like that. You don't deal with demonic activities without proper understanding, comprehension of God's word. Am I talking to somebody here? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Somebody shout fire! Batting a sister in the river, that's not deliverance. These are not deliverance activities. A prophet, a pastor making love to a sister in the name of deliverance, that's satanic, that's demonic, that's not deliverance. Because there are wrong misapplication and understanding about deliverance ministry, and that's why a lot of people cannot appreciate. Why God has brought deliverance ministry. Now, you must understand this. If you don't deal with that Goliath now, that Goliath will deal with you tomorrow. <laughs> Hear this. He that run from the battle will live to fight it. I have dealt with pastors who are smokers. They preach the Bible, but why are you smoking? Something is wrong. Their DNA has been corrupt by ancestral powers. How, you know some of you, when they get back to you, why you are crying, they are doing your naming ceremony. They pour alcohol on, in your lips and pour a libation. You don't know why you can't deal with that drinking. Something is wrong. Some of you, they took you to the river to bath you. Something is wrong. Is it possible for you to suffer for what you do not know? Yes, sir. Yes, ma. How many of you know? Are you the one that's seen in the Garden of Adam? No, are you the one? Are you Adam and Eve? So why are you suffering for what Adam and Eve did? That's it. The Bible said through one man sin came to the world. By another man, salvation came to the world. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, Women are not supposed to be having childbed pain. It was part of the cause God gave, on, gave to Eve. Check Genesis. It was supposed to be free. God caused Eve, but it flows to every other woman. He said, in pain shall I give birth. So it means, whatever happened to your father is traceable to you. Why? The blood. There's something about the bloodline. Now the blood can speak. That's why the scripture say, the blood of Jesus speaketh more better things than the blood of Abel. How do I know your blood can speak? When you are sick, for the medical world to know what is wrong, they take your blood. When they take your blood, 
their blood begin to tell them there is a malaria parasite. Your blood begin to tell them something is wrong with this body. Your blood tells them what is wrong. So your blood can speak. Am I helping you? No, I'm not excited. I just want to help you. Because when you, after I finish this sermon now, somebody will be able to, you don't need a deliverance minister. You need an understanding of deliverance. So you not jump up and down. When you see fake deliverance, you know. I was so very poor that one day I was ministering on the altar. I've told you the story. Invited to a powerful program. Ministering on the altar. I put on one of my shoes that I've gone through trialuya. I was shouting hallelujah. You know, when your shoe is shouting hallelujah, the thing has opened up. I was maintaining. When I say lift up your leg and shout fire, the skin left the soul. The soul was here and the skin was there. When I look at my leg, I was looking at my stocking and my stocking had a hole. So it was not a complete stocking. So I returned back. I now stood by the altar and I begin to say amen. Amen. I forgot all the things I was supposed to say. All the rema disappeared. And there were three sisters that sat at the front. They positioned their eyes to my shoe. They were looking at my shoe. They were each preaching each other, gossiping me on the altar. They were supposed to listen to a man of God, but they were looking at my packaging that was in disorder. Then I keep saying, Amen. 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 Now I could no longer preach any longer. Because I'm a preacher that preach and walk around. So when I was about to move around, somebody told me, don't, don't try it. Don't even try it. So I knew I can't try it. So I was looking at the whole congregation. Poverty is dangerous. You can be highly anointed and highly poor eyes. My own poverty was bad. That poor people were calling me poor. People that I know that they were poor. They were telling me I'm poor. You don't understand what I'm saying. Am I communicating? So when I discovered that it was too much, I couldn't preach. I said, all head bow. All eye close. Meditate, every one of you. <laughs> Everybody bow their head. Those three sisters at the front, they never bow their head. They say, you, we will see where this film will end. They were looking at each other. They refused to bow their head. I say, I repeat, all head bow. The spirit of God is moving. Don't allow God to blind your eye. They refuse to close their eyes. <laughs> I don't know what you have gone through. I don't know the insult you have passed through. But after the end of this deliverance service, somebody is about to take over. Hey! Somebody is about to break protocols. Somebody is about to violate principles. In the name of Jesus, I break the powers from your foundation. I break the powers from your father's house. I break the powers from your mother's side. I declare that you are delivered. Sit up. What do you need deliverance from? You need deliverance from troubles. Job chapter 5 verse 19. He said that the Lord shall deliver you from six troubles and in the seven shall nothing near your dwelling place. What do you need deli deliverance from? You need deliverance from unspeakable sin. Certain sins that are unspeakable. Sins where a father sleeps with his daughter. Sins where an elderly man is attracted to an eight-year-old girl. Unspeakable sin. There are certain things that they are unspeakable. And yet you are a believer, but it is troubling you. You need deliverance from it. What do you need deliverance from? You need deliverance from ancestral spirit, evil powers. What do you need deliverance from? You need deliverance from affliction, oppression. And what is affliction? Sickness is an affliction. How many did that cancer go to your bloodstream? What is going on? You are dying gradually. 
The medical world is saying, put your hearts together. You need deliverance from that affliction. There are five dangers that can happen to you when you reject deliverance. Number one, you experience delay without remedy. I call it the danger of rejecting deliverance. You experience delay without remedy. Number two, you receive prophecy without performance. God will prophesy through his mouthpiece, but you might stay throughout your lifetime and never receive the fulfillment. Number three, danger of re rejecting deliverance. Sometimes some people die untimely dead because the demons that are responsible will make sure that they bring that life to a logical conclusion. Number four, discouragement and depression when you reject deliverance. There are people in the church getting excited after the praise and worship. They get back home and face the real problem of their life. Christianity is not a religion. It's a way of life with God. It's relationship between the children and their father. It is beyond just a religion. What happens, number five, you experience poverty. Some people said, did Jesus did deliverance? Yes, sir. Mark chapter 9, verse 38. Let me show you. Now, John answered him saying, teacher, we saw someone who does not follow you us casting out demon in your name and we forbid him because he does not follow us verse 39 but jesus said do not forbid him for no one who works a miracle by my name can soon afterwards speak evil of me what does this scripture mean it means somebody might believe in the name of Jesus, cast out demons, not necessarily being connected to your own church. This is the problem of the body of Christ. If you are not in my church or not a member of my church, you are an unbeliever. It is only our church that is the best church. God nominated us, but we denominated ourselves. What does that mean? God called us his children. We brought denomination. And this denomination has brought division. I am from Champions. I am from A Church. I am from B Church. I am from Nicodemus Church. I am from Zacharias Church. So as a result of that, we have conflicts. So I've heard pastors say, if you are not in my ministry, any other thing anybody is doing elsewhere is fake. No! You are not God. Jesus himself, do you know what happened? John and the other disciples, while Jesus was around, they saw another man casting out demons. But he did not necessarily came to submit to Jesus. Then they now told Jesus, we forbid him because we do not know him. And Jesus said, No! If he's using my name to cast out demons and he's doing that even though he's, he has not come to submit to me directly, he does not mean he's against me. Amen. Hear this. If God has lifted you up, don't make yourself a demigod. If people do not come to submit to you, do not disrecommend them. It does not mean that everybody that must rise up must come through you. God can use any channel to raise any man. Now what does this scripture mean? It means that, I've heard people say it is only Jesus that is permitted to cast out demon. No. It means anyone can use the authority in Christ Jesus to cast out demons. Am I helping you? Am I helping you? Let me show you another scripture again. And this will help you. Mark chapter 3, verse 11 to 12. Are you there? Mark chapter 3, verse 11 to 12. 
And the unclean spirit, whenever they saw him, fell down before him, cried out saying, you are the son of God. He sternly warned them that they should not make him known. <laughs> so, the unclean spirit, demons, whenever they see Jesus, they said, you, you are the son of God. Then he warns them, don't make me know. My time has not come. So it means demons have the ability to recognize the true identity of a man of God. When they see you, they know. They know who you are. They know what you carry. Now let me tell you this. When a man of God is running away from doing deliverance, he has something is hiding. Jesus appeared and as soon as he appeared they fell on their face and said we know you and Jesus charged them no don't reveal my identity because my time has not yet come he said we know you are the son of God you are the son of the living God you are the son of the living God you become a terrorist to the kingdom of darkness that whenever they see you they begin to quake they begin to shout they are afraid that time you are a dangerous soul that time you are declared touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harms I give you another scripture. Do you know that demons can call the name of Jesus? Luke chapter 4 verse 33 to 36. Luke chapter 4. I've heard people say, why is that man doing deliverance and, the, and demons are now calling Jesus? Why should they be calling Jesus? Are they not afraid to call Jesus? There are sometimes that demons call Jesus in reference to the authority. Luke chapter 4 verse 33. I need to share this before we go on. Are you there? Verse 33. Now in the synagogue there was a man who had spirit of an unclean demon and he cried out with a loud voice. Look at verse 34. Say, let us alone. Have you seen our deliverance ministry? Those of you who are champions, are you hear the demon say, leave us alone, leave us alone. It didn't just start now. It started in the Bible days. And hear what it, the demons say in verse 34. Let us alone. What have we to do with you? Jesus of Nazareth. Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the only one of God. But Jesus rebuked, saying, Be quiet, come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. We know you, you are Jesus. So it's not an error. When deliverance is going on, and the demons and the demon scream, Jesus in reference of the one who is tormenting him. And when you see people fall down screaming, let me tell you what is happening. It is a reaction in the container. When the supernatural negative and the supernatural positive meet in a container, there's what I call a collusion of power. Then you see the container shaking. At that time light is chasing out darkness. So the container carrying that thing cannot stand. You hear noise and unnecessary shout. That's what happened. When you see people can't hold themselves. Power of God is pushing out darkness. So the man who is the container which is the flesh can't hold it because a supernatural force has entered into the abode of that body and is trying to force out the demon from the hiding place so when the demon is about to come out there is a reaction in the physical body I give you another scripture are you there? Mark chapter 1 
from verse 21. Are we there? Then they came into Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as once, having authority and not as the scribes. Verse 23. Are you there? Now there was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit. And he cried out saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you? Jesus of Nazareth. Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And in verse 25, and Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. In verse 26, and when your clean spirit had convulsed him, cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Then they were all amazed. So they were questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? Verse 27, What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commanded even an unclean spirit and they obey him. What new doctrine is this? Have you heard people talk about deliverance ministry and they say this thing is strange. <laughs> it was in the time of Jesus Christ. Now, the servant is not greater than the master. Whatever the master does, shows that that is, his, that is priority. Now, if you are a man of God, called by God, and Jesus could take time to attend to deliverance issues like this, if you don't do what he does, then you are not a follower of Christ. I have heard people say, no, no, why should you pray and your plastic chairs are broken? I said, that's an insult. You value your plastic chair than a life. A life that is about to be saved from demons. You are comparing a woman being life to a chair. God is setting a, a man free. Demons are coming out and probably as he's falling down, one of the chair break. The pastor is calculating the amount of the chair, not the life. When God appears, demons disappear. How do you assess deliverance provision? Number one, recognize that you need deliverance. Some of you need deliverance from troubles. Some of you need deliverance from your marital life. Some of you need deliverance from your ministry that have been stagnated. Some of you need deliverance from sickness. Some of you need deliverance from poverty. Some of you need deliverance from struggle. Some of you need deliverance from worries. Some of you need deliverance from premature death. Number one, for you to activate deliverance provision, recognize that you need deliverance. Accept, admit that you need deliverance. Number two, accept Jesus as the final authority to every deliverance. You don't need to cut yourself, do what we call incision, for you to be delivered. Jesus is the final authority. And when I say accept him, accepting him into your life as your Lord and personal savior. He must first be your Lord before he's able to deal with your issues. If not, demons will be casted out and they will return back. The Bible says if an unclean spirit is casted out of a man and he goes out and discover that he will come back patrolling, if he discover that the place is empty, the demons will go and invite a more stronger seven demons that are stronger than him. They will come back and enter that body. So the Bible says the situation of the man will be worse than the first. Number three. How do you access deliverance provision through fasting and prayer the disciples were trying to cast out demons they could not cast out the demon and Jesus said this kind of one goeth not out except through fasting and prayer fasting when you fast things become faster 
Prayer is not a monologue but a dialogue. Prayer is an act of downloading heavenly resources, connecting to the supernatural, and browsing through the website of the heavenlies. Prayer is one of the key cardinal points that makes a believer strong. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. A powerless Christian is tantamount to a non-entity. The Bible speaking say, men ought to pray always and not to faint. Number what? Number four, sacrifice. Challenging God with seeds. Never leave your altar empty. Provoke God for divine intervention. Provoke God. Sacrifice is anything that you value that when you release it to God, it causes you pain. That's it. Number five. Activating scriptural provision. Scriptures. In the book of Psalm, chapter 2, he said, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing and the kings and the rulers took counsel against the Lord and his anointed? That he that seated in the heaven shall laugh at them and have them in derision. The Bible said in Obadiah 117 for upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the children of Zion shall possess their possession. In Philippians 4 13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. In Philippians 4 19, my Lord shall supply all my need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. In Psalm chapter 1, he said, Blessed is the man that seated not in the seat of the scoffing nor standing in the ways of the sinner, but his delight is in the law, and in the law does he meditate day and night, then he shall be like a tree. Planted by the water in Colossians 2 10, ye are complete in Christ Jesus, who is the head of all principalities and power. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. He said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the power of his mind. Put up the whole armor that you may be able to quench the wise of the enemy. In verse 12, he said, Ye wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness in I places the bible speaking saying in Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10 say unto the righteous it shall be well Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 arise and shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord shall be risen all over you the bible said in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 he said for the spirit of the Lord God has anointed me to proclaim liberty to the captive to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord in Isaiah 60 2 verse 1. He said for the sake of Zion I shall not hold my peace. For the sake of Jerusalem I shall not rest until her righteousness went forth like a burning candle. Isaiah 43 verse 2. When you pass through the water I shall be with you. When you pass through the fire it shall not scourge you. In, jo in Joshua chapter 5 verse 9 he said see this day will I remove the reproach of the Egyptians of thy shoulder. In John chapter 4 verse 1 he said let not your heart be troubled yet believe in God also believe in me that in my father house there are many mansions if it were not so then I would have not told you that I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there ye may be also in verse 6 the Bible said he said I am the way the truth and the life that no man come to the father except through me scripture speaking saying they that know their God shall be strong and do everything Exploit. Scripture speaking say, and when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion around, we were like men that dreamed him. The Bible speaking saying, some trust in Zion, some trust in us, but we remember the name of the Lord, our God. The Bible speaking say, for the name of the Lord is a strong tower. That when the righteous run in, they are in their sin. The Bible speaking say, whose report shall we believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. The Bible speaking say, trust in the Lord and in all
all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path the bible speaking say when men are saying there is a casting down you shall be shouting that there is a lifting up i know who i am in christ jesus for greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world if god say yes no man can say no i am here to prophesy whatever i've tied you down is about to let you go whatever they have used to hold you is about to let you go whatever they have used to hold your destiny is about to let you go you don't serve a dead god you serve a living god when god say yes no man can say no they can't stop your business they can't stop your ministry surely they shall surely gather but not by me they shall fall for your sin whosoever say you will not rise i see them falling i see them falling you cannot die you shall not die the bible said let you believe and not die they that wait upon the lord they shall renew their strength they shall run and not be ready they shall walk and not fed this is your day this is your year this is your day this is your year i know who i am i know what i carry you are too loaded you can die you can die they can kill you your marriage is set free your business is set free you are delivered you are delivered somebody shut fire shut fire yeah 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 shut fire shut fire shut fire yeah 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 shut fire yeah yeah shut fire yeah 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 shut fire shut fire yeah 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 shut fire yeah shut fire war against the sister spirit the power from your father's they catch fire you shall not 